My name is Corey Moreau, and I am the Martha N. and John C. Moser Professor of Arthropod Biosystematics and Biodiversity. I'm also the director and head curator of the Cornell University Insect Collection. So the Cornell University Insect Collection is an incredibly important resource across campus and even across New York State and the world. We have over 7 million specimens. That makes us one of the largest insect collections in the world, and we are the largest insect collection at a land-grant institution. The Cornell University Insect Collection was started in 1871, almost at the founding of Cornell University itself. In fact, John Comstock started the collections in McGraw Hall because he was a chimes master, so it was actually originally housed there. It's since grown enormously, and we occupy a very large area within Comstock Hall. Hi, my name is Kylo Hearn, and I'm a PhD student here in the Department of Entomology right here in Comstock Hall. As a graduate student, I know how essential collections are to research. With around 7 million specimens, we can find just about any insect that we're looking for. But collections are much more than just a bunch of dead bugs in a box. They are basically a snapshot of biodiversity in a certain time. If you look at the label data on pinned specimens, you can see exactly where, when, and sometimes even how an insect was collected. You can imagine this would be important for things like discovering a new species, conservation efforts, and uh, just tracking evolutionary studies in time. Welcome to the Cornell University Insect Collection. My name's Jason, I'm the manager of the collection. Overall, there's about 7 million specimens in the collection, representing about 200,000 species. Uh, these specimens come from all over the world and come from, you know, many different expeditions that Cornell scientists have done over the years. Uh, in fact, the very first motorized expedition across the U.S. was done with a bunch of entomologists, including Cornell entomologists. Uh, and a lot of those specimens are still regularly used in research here. So you may have noticed that many of the specimens you've seen are actually housed this way, on a pin. And that's because insects have their exoskeleton on the outside. So essentially they exist extremely well in perpetuity as long as we keep them out of the light and safe from pest species. And that allows us to study the anatomy or morphology of these species. But again, of course, with one of the most important pieces of information is we need to have the label data associated with it. That tells us where they were collected, it tells us when they were collected, it tells us by who they were collected, and usually there's other important information, like if they were associated with a host plant or maybe what kind of habitat they were found in. But it's not just pins that we keep our specimens on. We also have a, an incredibly important collection in alcohol that's preserved for things that are softer bodied. And for things that are very small or for dissected parts of insects, we have a massive slide collection, which allows people to sort of examine the internal anatomy and even very small species. These specimens are used regularly by people discovering new species, doing uh, taxonomic revisions, conservation work, and even people outside of biological sciences. So physicists looking at uh, various material science and getting inspiration from uh, actual insects to artists who look at the myriad of forms to help get them inspiration uh, for their artistic works. So my job is never boring uh, in the insect collection. Um, I can never predict what's gonna happen in a given day, whether a new sample comes in that could be the next potential invasive species, or I deal with a ufologist that thinks they see something flying around that is a space insect, uh, to brand new acquisitions of specimens to field work. And of course, everyone's favorite aspect of the job is field work. And fortunately, many of us get to go out to interesting exotic localities to help build the collection to add to it. Uh, because the collection is constantly growing, not just by researchers that work here at Cornell, but also through a bunch of dedicated amateurs. And we really depend heavily upon amateurs, uh, both in determining material, but also in collecting and donating material to the collection itself. And so we've been built basically on a, a many hundreds of years worth of amateurs and experts building, um, identifying specimens and collecting specimens. I sometimes get asked, when will we stop collecting specimens? And the answer is actually never. We need every single one of these insects so that we know not only sort of where these insects were historically, but we also need to know have they changed their distributions. We also might want to ask questions about 
How much variation is there within a single species? So without lots of individuals, we'll never understand what are the sort of boundaries around where that species ends. We also want to be able to understand things like, you know, how are insects being affected by human activities? And sometimes we might want to measure aspects of, of chemistry around things that they've been exposed to, or we may want to ask basic questions about, you know, where did these insects evolve and how long have they been on the planet? And we can use a myriad of tools to address those questions. But it's not just the research we're doing ourselves. We're also training the next generation of scientists. We have tons of undergraduates and graduate students who actively use our collections every single day. In addition, we actually provide services to the greater community here, both at Cornell and in New York State and even around the world. And that's an important resource. We're essentially a biodiversity library. A scientist anywhere in the world can make a request to look at our specimens and we can carefully box them up and ship them to scientists around the world so that they can continue their research. It's that rich collection of all those forms of insects that we have preserved here that allows us to address these rich questions in one of the most biologically diverse groups of organisms on the planet. <laughs>